Hi, everybody. I know it's late in the day. Um, I will hopefully go quick with this. Um, so my name is Brennan. Uh, we work at Query. Uh, we do distributed data set version control. I'm that popular. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, we uh, worked on this thing. We've been using this uh, inside of Query for a long time. Uh, desync is basically just rsync for DAGs. Uh, and for us, this was uh, something we had to build just to sort of like uh, solve a very specific problem inside of our stack. And today, what I want to present to you is uh, an effort to sort of take some of what we learned and ideally share it back with the community. Um, so this is our problem. Just I have stuff in my IPFS, refs, IPFS repo, and I know where I need it to go. Just put this over there. I don't care how you do it. I, I don't want to ask you how it happens. I just Pure A, pure B, go over there. Um, I don't, I'm mostly, there are like things inside of the D-Web that are less desirable when we're building products. We have this like content resolution times, brother trucking nat traversal issues, like just like stuff that gets in the way of being able to just say, I have a thing, I want it to go over there, I want it to go as fast as humanly possible. And so for us, the thing that we're trying to look for is just this, Point to point, uh, so we've I've got a, couple, a bunch of differences that we have from like traditional, uh, amazing that I'm saying traditional in IPFS, like bit swap based like content resolution. I, I like speaking to this crowd where it's like, yeah, that's the new norm. And so we're talking about just point to point setups. And so we're gonna leverage the fact that we know of it, we have a very different problem set from bit swap, where we now just, we can sort of take advantage of a different set of constraints and solve for some different uh, solutions. So. Things we do in desync that are different from your traditional uh, bit swap movement is we set up the conversation beforehand. So it's very similar to rsync. Uh, we leverage blocks for sync because if you look at the rsync algorithm, we have um, there's actually a rolling checksum calculation inside of rsync. So you're doing on the fly content addressing to do rsync properly, right? But we already we're talking about syncing a Merkle DAG, so we don't have that problem at all. We can just start start with the blocks themselves. Uh, we don't want to send stuff we already have, so we want that conversation to sort of happen beforehand, and we don't want to duplicate stuff over the wire if we can avoid it, uh, because again, we want it to be fast. Um, and then we want to just fall back to multiple methods if necessary. Uh, there are dirty secrets in our initial implementation of desync. It was originally, and still to this day, operates over HTTP. So we actually like take blocks out of your repo, put them over HTTP, send them to uh, a, a HTTP server, and then store them in an IPFS DAG on the other side. And that actually works way better than it sounds. Um, and, and we'll get into why in a second. Uh, but yeah, we want to fail early. Cool, I got to move quicker. Uh, so we did this as an IPFS plugin, um, which I think is just to like, sort of we wanted to move this into libp2p because that's where it belongs. Um, we have this like, this is generally the sort of form factor, which is just desync push this to that. Um, put the CID over there. Hopefully this works. Uh, I recorded a demo of it. So on the left, we have one person using, uh, yeah, we'll, I'll just talk to this as we go. So. I'm, I'm Alice on the left, uh, Bob and Alice as usual. So I'm gonna pin, uh, I have nothing pinned on this side, and then on the right side, I'm Bob with that pure ID, and I have something pinned. Okay, cool, and I wanna push something from Bob to Alice. So I'm gonna run IPFS daemon. Uh, oh, I'm gonna get it wrong, and then I'm gonna type IPFS daemon, and then you're gonna see something fun and new. There's this desync plugin started, because this new plugin API is really cool, you should totally check it out if it exists. Um, and then we have a really simple command line wrapper, which is just like desync and then desync allow. So I have to bring some trust to this. So I'm gonna say, I wanna allow Bob to send me stuff. That's an important caveat. Um, so Bob's now on the allow list of Alice, and so I'm just gonna say, push this to that, and we're done. Um, and so that figured it all out and moved it across. That was over libp2p. It was also on my local machine, so like latency, simulate it in your brain. Um, but yeah, that's how desync works. Um, we, so there's, oh yeah, I have to click this, but there are some like issues here. This is where the code is living, so you can check it out. But this is mainly a proof of concept. Um, we uh, had to fork IPFS to add something to core API that is, should be discussed. Basically, we needed access to libp2p inside of the plugin. We gotta get to the host, which is a bit of a question mark whether that should even be okay. Um, so for me, this like, uh, thank you, but also, this invites a really interesting conversation about what plugins should do, and I'm really excited to have that. So if you want to do an unconf talk about it, come talk to me, and we'll do an unconf. If you don't want to do that, don't talk to me, and, or ask me how my day's going, I don't know. Anyways, that's it. Thank you.